Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm happy to say good morning because usually when we have these um, virtual calls, we have to greet everybody in every time zone. <laughs> so this is much, you know, better and direct. So my name is Joy Ajapon. I'm originally from Ghana, currently living in the Czech Republic. I've been part of the Wikilabs folklore team for the past four years. And we are happy to present to you today Preserving Stories, Preserving Identity, Wikilabs Folklore Unveiled. If I may ask, how many of us have participated in Wikilabs Folklore before? OK, and how many of us are interested in participating? I know it's too early to ask, but <laughs> great. So we are happy you are here. And for those who are just joining us for the very first time, we just wanted you to know the genesis of Wikilove's folklore. It started as um, Wikilove's love, just celebrating tradition, cultures, events, basically weddings, everything that is centered on love. And um, we realized that there was a bit of conflicting um, issues with it because it wasn't really relating well to other groups. So we changed it to the Wikilove's folklore, which um, cuts across all aspects of traditional artifacts, dance, food, um, music, cultures, tangible heritage sites, intangible, everything that is related to tradition and culture based on your region. We'd love to see it. So that's how come the name changed. So basically, Wikilove's Folklore, it's a photography campaign which covers all the things that I've mentioned. So it could be um, beadwork, it could be um, tapestry, it could be song, it could be people playing the flute or certain instruments that depict culture and heritage from your community. And basically, we want to see all these things on Wikimedia Commons. So Vikilas Folklore is also a photographic competition that houses or accepts all kinds of contributions in these areas. Because at the end of the day, before I'll be able to move to a particular country, if I'm able to know what the kind of culture that depicts in that country or the things that I should know before getting there, it makes it much more easier than getting there and then I get the shock that, oh, this is from here or this is this and this is that. So basically, we decided to have this competition so that it would also generate all information videos or uh, audio visuals from different parts of the world. And then at the same time, give you some sort of, um, uh, let's say, an award for sharing outstanding images. So the theme is often centered on all that I've mentioned. It's a lot. But what I just want to say is that it all depends on how your community relates to what folklore is or culture is. Some people have certain tapestries that they hold dear to. The Irelands have a different way of communicating what folklore is. Um, I would say from the Ghanaian perspective, we also have certain kind of music, certain kind of instruments that we use. And it's beautiful to see all these diverse um, you know, instruments from different countries. We just need to know what role it plays. So the theme cuts across all these aspects. So you can decide that, OK, maybe in my community, um, we love a particular type of cuisine, the traditional made cuisine. Nobody knows about it. You can decide to take more photos on that and share it. Or you can decide to do everything. So you can decide to take a part of dance activities, um, tourist sites, um, heritage sites. Um, it could be an apparel that is unique to your community or country. It could also be um, a particular type of um, music that is played because the way a particular community will play the fluid will be different from another community. Some people too are also very passionate about using the violin. Other people too like using the drums. So what makes it different is that these countries are very comfortable with certain instruments that they are using, and then we want to see those things. I mean, the whole world wants to see it. So that is why Wikilove's Folklore has huge, or let's say broad, kind of theme for 
its competition. So these are the prizes. Um, maybe you'd want to see something more bigger, but believe me, this is something that would also um, help you to understand that we actually appreciate the little efforts you're doing. And as time goes on, definitely we will get more, you know, bigger awards. But I, want, I don't want, want us to focus more on the prize that you're getting, just kind of like a pat on the back. But I want you to focus on how we're going to preserve that knowledge, preserve that information, preserve the culture that is being depicted in your country. What would people benefit from that? You should look at the long-term goal rather than the um, short-term remuneration. So how to participate? So this goes out to those who are yet to participate. I've already talked more about the, the theme, and you would have to decide which areas of the theme you're interested in. It could be five of them, it could be two of two, it could be one, or it could be all. We're open to have contributions from all aspects. So to participate, like I said, it's linked to Wikimedia Commons. You should be able to have um, access to Commons. We have a template for 2025 already. If you want to start your landing page, you can start that and put all the information there. We're also ready and active to support you if you need any guidance in setting up your landing page. This actually helps um, community members who are not really part of your community, but they're in your country. Because during the organization of Weekly Loss Folklore, we've realized that we would have a community participating in the folklore activity. However, we are, there are some individuals who do not even know that your community exists, but they participate because you've already had the landing page created, and they see it online, and they just are curious about it, and then they contribute. So some of these members who even win awards are not even <laughs> linked to a community or Wikimedia activity. So it's very important that you're able to have your landing page created, and then um, it would draw attention from a lot of people. And then in the long run, they would find out about your community, and then they can join you as well. So some of the checklists you should have um, while running this campaign. Obviously, you need to know that copyrighted images are not accepted. The image um, has to use the effects data. The image must be properly categorized so that we do not you know, have so much work to do at the end of the day. Because when you give so much work, it's also time. And that time could be used to rather make more advocacy and get people on board. So why don't we do it right from the start? So if you are taking the photos, make sure that the categories are well you know, aligned so that we will be able to identify it and also um, have it part of the final photos for the jury process in a timely manner. Category is important. Watermark should not be accepted, um, must not be excessively you know, processed because sometimes I know that there are some communities that um, have probably low quality cameras that they use. Some communities to have like some environmental issues, but then the focus of the image is there. So they want to kind of like hype it a little bit and make it look so good. But <clears throat> sometimes it's good to also see it the way it is and not overly process it because it will be a problem for. Um, commons, no pornographic and explicit images, and images should not be out of scope based on the theme. So as you're running the campaign, you should think about the theme, what you've selected, and what you want to move on to. So to all of you here, I'm happy to announce to you the winners of Wikilas Folklore 2024. That is on your extreme right toilet. <laughs> so, um, I cannot see you clearly, but the first image is a young boy running through the rice maze. And then the second image is not so clear for me. But if you can't see it, please let me know. Or we can kindly expand it a bit if it's possible. Oh. OK. And we have. OK. So then we have to just ignore that. But we will make the slides available for everyone to have access to it. 
And then um, top winning images. So we have categories like the first three. The first three are the top three winners. And then we have top winning images that the jury, you know, selects top 10 that is also outstanding. However, the first three has to be just for three. And then we have consolation prizes for those contributors as well. Any comments? Any woo? woo. <laughs> so thank you all for participating, all those who are involved. If your country's image is here, the fact that it's not your individual image, once it's from your country, I think you should be proud of yourself. And we've always been receiving outstanding images all these years. And it's really exciting, and we want to see more. So I would invite my colleague, Tyven, to take over for the other aspects of Wikileaks Folklore Campaign. Thank you. OK. So thank you, Joy. And uh, Wikileaks Folklore is not just about images. Uh, there's, there's also a writing competition called Feminism and Folklore. So whatever images or uh, can say the topics or the theme of Wikileaks folklore, that images are click, uh, they can also be articles that can be written onto them. And so it's feminism and folklore. And hi everyone, I am Tywin, I am from India, and today I am be here uh, to speak about feminism and folklore. Yeah. So you all are excited? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. so feminism and folklore is a writing competition. So it's on Wikipedia, annually in the month of uh, February and March. Uh, so f the same timeline as for Wikileaks Folklore, uh, it's same for the Feminism and Folklore Writing Competition. Uh, for the feminism aspect, uh, since in March, uh, we also have the International Women's Day that is celebrated. So feminism part also plays a very important role into this uh, contest and uh, the folklore aspect. So. In general, uh, feminism and folklore is capturing uh, or, or can say has a theme or a vision to uh, not only mind the, uh, can say the gender gap, but also the cultural gap on Wikipedia. So uh, it starts from uh, the February 1st and ends on the 31st of March. And uh, it's uh, basically uh, aim is to collect the articles on uh, human cultural diversity from whole worldwide. So in the 2024 edition that we had uh, this year, so let's see on. So the focus is uh, to get on uh, all the cultures all around the world so that uh, we can write articles into it as well as uh, we can also uh, write about women. And uh, uh, this year we had about uh, like uh, 43 Wikipedia communities that have been participating in the feminism and folklore contest. And uh, yes, it had around more than 9,800 articles that were uh, created uh, during this uh, campaign. So in total, we have around uh, 37,000 uh, articles that has been created in the last uh, five years for Wikileaks for, for the feminism and folklore concept. So. Yeah, so that's all from the feminism and folklore concept. And let's join the next step. Thank you, Tywin. So um, just to add, the Wikileaks folklore had um, over 41,000 images, videos, audiovisuals covered. And we've seen that over the years, there's always been a growth. Last year was 30,000. This year was 41,000, and we have about 1,900 participants from 190 countries. So it should tell you that even though you would see on our meta page that, oh, maybe uh, 25 contributions or communities participated, like I told you, there's so many individuals out there we need to get on board so that we can also nurture them in our respective communities. So um, we, we would be excited to have you increase our numbers as well for next year. It's not just about increasing numbers, but the more you increase numbers, it means that the world is able to see all the other hidden treasures that are not yet on Wikimedia Commons. Because believe you me, there are still thousands of images out there, thousands of things that have not been represented yet. And um, before we end with the feminism and folklore aspects, we understand that um, some communities may not really connect well with what folklore is. 
but like I said, it all depends on how you define it because every culture has its own way it um, communicates its traditional activities. It may not be termed folklore, but you can make your own rendition so that you can communicate it better to your respective communities. And um, lastly, I would say that because you're in this room, uh, we're going to be organizing a series of workshops that's for feminism and folklore so that any questions you have that you want to help debunk or you want to have some sort of clarity, we'll let you know how we can fit in feminism, folklore, and all folklore activities together. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, we will be happy. You can also scan the code to join us online. And I hope you're enjoying your postcards. Yeah. So we have various activities coming up, the poster session, community meetup. We can have more interactions if you're ready to say, hey, Joy, Tyvin, I'm ready to sign up. Let me know what to do. We're ready to have that discussion with you. And you have received your postcards. And then um, you can sign up for the campaign as well. Thank you. OK, so Tyvin mentioned, don't forget these dates. Any question, contribution, addition, subtraction? Hello, Mike. Maybe can you share some tips for the people that is going to take part of this? Uh, sorry. So uh, maybe can you share some nice tips for the people that it's going to be taking part of this new, this 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 new new, new project? Okay. So one of the tips I'll share is that. First and foremost, you need to understand your community. Do they know what folklore is? Do you have a different term? You have to find out what that term is and then communicate it with them because you need to get them to understand what they're doing. You need to understand the theme, the number of things we're working on. Um, you need to identify the gaps, what hasn't been projected from your community yet because sometimes we travel places and we are still wild, like, okay, this exists, this is that. But we want to see it online so that those who are not able to travel could have an idea of what it is. And then you can also um, collaborate with these um, heritage museums, partners. You know, you can just collaborate with them, tell them about the project, tell them that you would want them to, you know, kind of like support you. It could be they have also some resources they can share if they make it open access then it's like a win-win because they are sharing it with you and then we also share it with the world. So you have to work on partners. And then you also have to look at um, how you can apply for your grants ahead of time too. It's very important. So you can have some prizes for your local community. At the end of the day, they also get the international prizes as well. And I think lastly, it will just be the basic rules that we go by, the guidelines we go by, making sure that you don't go to places that you're not allowed to go to. You need to understand the safety of your people. You need to um, set your targets, your metrics, and then you need to know what kind of external resources that you need, partners, media, just to cover it and then share it across. Because in as much as we still want to get people joining our communities, there will be a lot of people who would not even join, but they want to participate. So your media coverage should be very good so that they will join. I hope. Some of these tips are yeah, thank okay. Thank you very much. And the last, the last question, I would like to hear your opinion because you, you said something very important that is to make visible the culture into the world, into the digital world. And now in these last two years, being, we've been talking a lot about uh, artificial intelligence and generation of uh, generative AI and stuff. And uh, for example, these kind of uh, photos that are not already on the internet, uh, they are invisible to these new uh, AI models. But uh, I would like to hear your opinion. What do you think on this aspect that these communities are invisible into the digital world and this is like an opportunity to make them shine, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I get you right, I think that AI will still play its role. But however, AI also feeds on the, what you share. So once AI is able to connect, I mean, you, it would automatically transfer to whichever um, platform is also housing its 
you know, resources. But we have to also do our work and then make it as work also easy for other people who use it. Because at the end of the day, we need to spread it wide and fast. So we just have to keep doing what we do and then keep bringing the things that are being hitting to the limelight as soon as we can. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's the question she was <laughs> the first. <laughs> Hi. How many people do you have in the international jury, and do you really think you can uh, growing is uh, it growing wouldn't be too much for your inter for the international jury to to judge all the pictures? Oh, that's a good question. So um, I think when we started, the jury was about maybe like five or six, and this year we opened more room for a lot of people to join. So like ten, fifteen, yeah. About 15, yeah, because the photos keep increasing. So we, I mean, we're still learning from um, these challenges or these, you know, inputs from people so that we don't also overbedding the jury members. And thankfully, anytime we want them to reconfirm their support, all the people who started with us since inception are still there. And then we're also accommodating new people. So I think we'll be fine for now. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Before we get okay, okay. Yeah, thank you so much for that. We will take note of it. Yes, okay. just a quick question. Do you have uh, any tips to deal with a challenge like uh, recording audio testimony, for instance, when you are on the field? Okay, I mean, when you're recording audio, you have to seek the consent of the people or the person you are um, recording the information from. You just need to, at the end of the day, psych them, let them know that this is what we are doing, this is the impact, this is how it will be beneficial to a lot of people. So we need to get that information. Because I understand you, there are some um, places that you visit, you just have information that's orally translated, but it's not written, there's no reference, nothing. So you have to let them know how important it is and how dire we need it. So once you do that and this, the consent is approved, maybe what you can do just to be safe, because sometimes it goes against, it's more of someone's word against another. So they can say that, oh, we told that you told us to do it, but then another day they can say, no, they did not see that. So probably you can make a small consent form it could be digitally, you just let them fill in the information or you can let them sign something just to keep you on the safe side. And then you can proceed with the recording. But if they say no, I don't think you can really push it. But that's when you can also have intervention from either government bodies or um, institutions that you partner with who can be the forefront to help you get that. Have you noticed any kind of regional patterns in regards to the participation in the contest? Like, I don't know, maybe there are some regions that are having like way more submissions, and that could signal that there could be like some opportunity for collaboration with some regional affiliates in the regions that don't have as many submissions. Have you noticed any kind of patterns in regards to that? Yes, we have, especially from India. We have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of photos because they really have a lot of tradition. <laughs> so, um, what we can do is, I mean, we've seen that pattern, and then. We've seen um, some other groups too that do not have so much. It's just because we need to have more of these discussions. So that's why some of these meetings are important so that we can actually help you. Because truth be told, sometimes online meetings can also take a lot of time and also communication might not go so well. So that's why we're happy that you're here. So you'd be instruments to also share it. And then we would work on, um, I mean, we have these uh, toolkits that we've already provided on our platforms. Every year there are toolkits. But we'll do more of it and then we'll also try to make a call for, especially those that we've seen that pattern of um, low, level, low outcome. And then we would coordinate with the other regions and see how we can work on it. So I'll also take note of that. Thank you. We have one minute, so one. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, having organized the um, Miklaus Monuments and Miklaus Earth, I noticed there's a huge difference that uh, for these contests you go alone in the, <laughs> in the nature <laughs> or in the cities, be photograph buildings. Here you are dealing with people. Mm -hmm. uh, can you like share more experience how how it's different from these two uh, previous contests? 
Okay, so I would say that um, this one also has more to do with events and uh, traditional displays. So, for example, I think in Ghana there was this. Uh, they were fortunate to meet one renowned musician who is very passionate about her culture in the northern part of Ghana. They met up with her. She did a dance, took photos. They heard of so many events, and they also had to um, attend these events. But at the same time, before you even try to take the photo, you need to seek consent. That's the a bit of the challenge. Unlike the um, buildings and you know nature and all that. Unless they say no photography or um, there's no freedom of panorama, which I, I know that in Europe you have more a lot of freedom of panorama. Unlike in Africa, you're able to just randomly take the photos. But as dealing with people, events, you scout for events, attend these events, seek consent, take photos, you go for, um, like let's say, like drinks, you're taking drinks or you're eating out and you realize that this is a local cuisine, you can just simply take a photo of your local cuisine or we can partner with these food industries and tell them that probably when you're making a setup on local cuisines, can we take photos of it for this purpose? So it's more of interactions with the people and more of um, strategic partnerships before you can be able to get this. So it's, it's quite tedious, but... Okay, my time is up. But I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question here. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Joy. So we organized Week Lives for Kwawa in Uganda, had like a national campaign, mm -hmm. uh, which really helped because we had like national level prizes. So, um, but my question is at the international level, have you thought of having like regional uh, prizes? Because I think, like you have mentioned, like there is always less of entries, for example, from just one country, India. And it's hard, very hard to compete with uh, those images. The quality is really good, and uh, we just feel like <laughs> yeah, entries from Africa don't stand a chance. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, so have you thought about having regional prizes so that yeah. because culture is so diverse, and judging photos from you know Africa alongside photos from you know Asia is gonna be very difficult for. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I'm being prompted about the time, but what I'll say is that we had that in mind and we would institute it. So that's why we have a lot of people we can talk to, like David. So going forward, we would discuss 